Happy New Year, soulmates. Happy New Year, brother. That's right. New Year, <laughs> new you, new that, opportunities. All of that. Plenty to uh, talk about on our first show of the new year. It's Monday, January the 2nd. Welcome to Fox News Black Report. I'm Courtney Hicks. And I'm the Cordelai Corte. We are honored to stand behind this desk each day to take you on a journey across black America and mm -hmm. the stories that impact our people in yet another new year. I was going to say in this new year, we're going to continue to continue to press forward and bring you our news, our views and our voice. So let's tap into some of the top stories for the new year as a Philadelphia man who served nearly three decades behind bars, including 25 years on the city's death row list was fatally shot. Christopher Williams was gunned down while attending the funeral of another former prisoner. Reports say he was following a funeral procession by car and once Williams stepped out of his vehicle, he was shot in the head. Williams was released from prison in February of 2021, proudly celebrating his exoneration of four murder murders and was eventually acquitted of two other murders. Black America is back to work following the latest jobs report. President Biden says history has been made as the economy over the last year created 467,000 jobs and the unemployment rate for black workers fell to 6.9% and dropped to 5.8% for black women specifically. The president highlighted that the 6.6 .6 million jobs added to the U.S. economy since he took office and is expected to give an update report in the coming months. And there is a, a new medical research out that shows racism poses a public health threat to millions worldwide. Doctors say racism, uh, xenophobia and discrimination are fundamentally influences on health globally, but have been overlooked by health researchers, policymakers and practitioners. The study also found that inaccurate and unfounded assumptions about genetic differences between races also continue to shape health outcomes through research, policy and practice, the review of evidence. Now, the study argues that discrimination is a significant driver of racial health inequities and impacts health by directly affecting the body via stress responses, profoundly shaping living environments and limiting individuals opportunity to improve health. Police departments across the country are hemorrhaging officers faster than recruiters can find qualified applicants now that officers are leaving the force in record numbers. Seattle has lost more than a quarter of its police force in the past two and a half years. The Fairfax County Police Chief in Virginia declared a personnel emergency on July 28th, instituting mandatory overtime. Three small towns, Kinley, North Carolina, Melbourne Village, Florida, and Springfield, Colorado, experienced mass resignations this past summer. Some experts also blame social media and news coverage of high-profile police shootings, in-custody deaths, and violent interactions, all of which has led to a growing mistrust of law enforcement. The International African American Museum won't open this month as planned because of humidity and temperature issues with the building in Charleston, South Carolina. This is according to officials. Now, the concern is that uh, environmental fluctuations could damage artifacts planned to be on display. Museum officials said they are monitoring the humidity in the facility, which is downtown in Charleston. Now, the museum is at the former Gadsden Wharf, where tens of thousands of enslaved Africans first entered America. Organizers of the museum broke ground at the site back in 2019 after raising more than $100 million in public and private funds. Now, and the museum had been scheduled to open the weekend of January 24th, first, shortly after uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. No word on the new opening date. Evanston, a city just north of Chicago, where my brother lives, is seeing positive change as they're the first U.S. city to pay reparations to black residents. Its population of 78,000 is diverse, about two-thirds white, nearly a fifth black, with a sizable Asian and Hispanic community, and its politics predictably liberal. During the 2020 election, Donald Trump got less than a tenth of the vote there, and the city has started paying money to black residents who faced barriers to buying the home they wanted due to the mid-20th century policies. 
According to their city council, the plan was shaped by a series of town hall meetings and consultations with local residents, but it's worth noting that there are no cash payments being issued. Instead, the, uh, they will have uh, reparations in the form of uh, $25,000 grants that can be used for a down payment on a home, repairs, or to pay down a mortgage. And to Maryland now, where Governor-elect Wes Moore says that relocating the FBI's headquarters to Prince George's County is a, quote, personal priority and has called on the U.S. General Services Administration to make a decision that aligns with President Biden's equity goals. Moore's comments come a day after House Majority Leader Cindy H. Hoyer, U.S. Senators Ben Cardin and Chris Van Holen negotiated at least a three-month delay in a decision on the relocating by inserting language about the headquarters into an omnibus federal spending package. Biden revived a plan to relocate to either Maryland, which uh, two sites in Prince George's uh, or Virginia, which has a site in Fairfax County. Securing the FBI headquarters would be an economic boom for either jurisdiction. In major U.S. cities, officials are ramping up efforts to reduce homelessness. New York City Mayor Eric Adams recently announced plans to involuntarily institutionalize unhoused, severely mentally ill folks on the streets, while L.A. Mayor Karen Bass has declared a state of emergency to quickly marshal local, state, and federal resources. Now, the Biden-Harris administration is rolling out a national push to reduce homelessness by 25 percent in two years. The initiative would mandate various government agencies work with states and cities to target unsheltered homelessness. It would also expand housing and services to prevent people from being unhoused before they turn to the streets. Now, new data from the Department of Housing and Urban Development shows that the number of people experiencing homelessness increased by 6%. And as we begin this new year, changes to retirement rules could be coming up, uh, could be uh, coming and could help seniors build more savings. A report says the changes stem from a combination of bills passed by the House and Senate, including auto enrollment in work 401ks. Employers could also help workers with student loan debt, you don't say. Another change would allow bigger and earlier contributions and increase the age when people have to begin taking minimum distributions. Now, if passed, the changes would take place after December 31st, 2024. So are we looking forward to these changes or not? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if we're looking forward to them, <laughs> but, you know, they are what they are. Yeah. You know, what can you do? What can you do? Mm -hmm. But um, but back to the story about the uh, the officers that are quitting in mass. Oh yeah, I was just kind of blown away that you know there are folks out there blaming the media, you know, for this. And you know, I know we report very often mm -hmm. on officer-involved shootings and allegations of uh, overuse of force. Um, you know, as we should. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, to think that you know we're the reason why police officers, you know, may be resigning from the force. Um, maybe it's not us. Maybe it's just the call for accountability. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they've ever thought about that. Well, it could, could be. could be. I, I think, you know, it's easier to say you and you and this and that and, mm -hmm. and really not hold yourself uh, accountable. But, uh, you know, internally, there's no denying that police departments across uh, the country are catching it on, on many different levels. And uh, I'm hoping in this new year, as everybody is taking a, a, a breath of fresh air, that we can come up with more resolution-based uh, uh, dialogue and, and solutions that'll get us to where we want to be, regardless of what side of the of the shield you may be on, whether it be, a, you know, a citizen or, or someone in blue. It, you know, we need, uh, we need results and, and we need positive um, yielding results, if yeah. you will. So, and, and, I don't know. And speaking of results, I mean, isn't it pretty amazing that Wes Moore, he's still oh, only yeah. the governor-elect, but he is already getting to work, uh, trying to persuade mm -hmm. uh, the federal government to mm -hmm. move the headquarters of the FBI to Prince George County. That would be a big boom be huge. Uh, for Maryland, uh, for that black community mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Prince George County. This is mm -hmm. a personal priority, he, he says, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as he's getting ready to take office. And so, you know, we're, we're only, what, two days into the new yeah. year, and uh, it's on and popping. It's going to be interesting to just watch him throughout uh, his, his term, because he, he is already a rock star. That's Folks right. are looking forward to that.